So WEP is short for Wired Equivalent Privacy. It was introduced in 1997 to provide confidentiality uh, of information on a wireless network that is comparable to the traditional wired network. It allows uh, for using one of two key sizes. It can be set up to use one of two key sizes, either 64-bit key or 128-bit key. And when we get into the details of how it will work, you will see that it includes something called an initialization vector. If it's set up to use 64-bit keys, then this is really a 24-bit of an initialization vector and a pure 40-bit of the actual key that the user enters. If it's 128-bit key, then there's still a 24-bit of initialization vector and 104-bit uh, of the actual key that's remaining. And in its actual working, the key is used to encrypt the packets. And this is one main weakness, one main problem with WEP that was solved in WPA2. So one of the main differences between WEP and WPA2, which we still don't know about, is that in WEP, the key is used directly in encrypting the packets. In WPA2, you will see that it's something different. The key used to negotiate a new key that is random that gets to encrypt the packets. So let's get started and, and take a look on how things happen. That's the sender over here, and we have a plain text that we want to send to the access point or to another person, whatever it is. But anyway, you want to send it out to a receiver, right? The first thing that happens in WEP is that it calculates something called the CRC, the cyclic redundancy check. It's like an integrity check. You can think of it the same as you think of a hash function. It is mainly for error detection. So this value of CRC is calculated and appended to uh, the plain text such that when it arrives at the receiver, it can be checked for errors and the receiver can know if there is any errors in it or not while transmission. And after that, we want to generate a key that will be used for encryption. So in general, we would think that we will have a 64-bit key that will be a seed for RC4 to generate the RC4 key stream and XOR that with the plain text. But there's a problem with this scenario. If we use a 64-bit key multiple times, then we get the key stream multiple times. If the key is the same every time, then the key, stream, uh, the key stream will be the same every time. When we were discussing stream ciphers, we mentioned that if the same key is used more than once, then this makes script analysis quite simple. It enables and allows script analysis on the cipher text such that an opponent can figure out what the plain text is or what the key is. So in order to avoid that, we need to introduce something called an, the initialization vector in here. So we need to concatenate an initialization vector to the key. And this initialization vector should be random every time to prevent any repetition of the seed that we use to RC4 such that the key stream is different every time. So we introduce a 24-bit initialization vector and we minimize the actual key size to 40-bit. And then we concatenate these two together to be 64-bit together. And that becomes the seed to RC4. And since the IV changes every time, then the seed will be changing every time then the key stream will be changing for every plain text. So a new random IV for every new message generates a new key stream for that new message. So what happens next between the key stream and the plain text in order to produce the ciphertext? If you remember RC4, what happens using these two such that we can output a ciphertext? XOR, yes. So we should take the key stream and XOR it with the plain text. And this produces the cipher text that we get to send to the other party. But there is a simple problem here is if we only send the cipher text 
then how will the receiver decrypt the ciphertext? The receiver should know the whole key to decrypt the ciphertext. But in fact, they only know the key part of the seed. How will, they how will the receiver generate the key stream if they only know the key? They also need to know the initialization vector. I hope that's clear because this is about to make a problem. So we need to send the initialization vector with the ciphertext to the receiver and the initialization vector gets sent in plain text. And this allows the receiver on the right hand side to obtain this initialization vector here and they know what the key is, they concatenate them, have the seed for RC4, and now they can generate the same key stream that was used by the sender. And then they XOR this key stream with the ciphertext to obtain the plain text back. How does that sound?